Hey, how's it going? This is GJ Sports. Uh, today we have a very special episode. Uh, we have Shannon Evans, who's had a fascinating basketball career. He's joining us, and he's going to talk about the great stuff he's doing uh, with Black Lives Matters. Uh, before we get into that, I want to remind you guys to follow us on our social page, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, GJ Sports Podcast. Uh, you can reach us for email. Uh, please send any questions our way, djsports at gmail.com, um, and we'll answer any of the questions on the show. So, uh, Shannon, thanks for being on the show, man. I appreciate it. Oh, man, thank you for your time. I'm glad to be here. Of course, of course. Um, before we get into your, your basketball career, I know you've been doing a lot of great stuff with Black Lives Matter. So uh, why don't you just talk a little bit about that? Uh, so me and my childhood friends that I grew up with from middle school, high school, and we've been friends ever since. We, uh, we came up with a foundation called Goods by the Way Foundation. And with that foundation, we just provide it's a nonprofit organization that we provide um, just positive things in our, in our community. We give back. We have a uh, Book bag, book bag drive where we give kids book bags and school supplies. We have cookouts in the summertime where we're just having a blow up uh, events and like things where kids can play and everybody coming together, uh, uniting the community. And we kind of just, just want to give back to our community. And what we did for Black Lives Matter, we had a, a piece for protest in our city and a lot of people came out and we just wanted to raise awareness in, in our town and let people know that we stand with people and we're with them and, and we feel how they feel. That's awesome, man. Um, is there anywhere people can reach the page or donate or anything? Yes. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, uh, at goods, by the way. And, and you can donate there. There's a link and, and you can get involved and help that way as well. All right. Really cool. Yeah. Make sure uh, you guys check out the page and uh, donate if you can. So uh, you had a really interesting basketball career. I think, more unique than the average um you know basketball athlete you know you've been all over the place so i think that's that's really cool but let's start with high school you you grew up um as an all-around athlete you played baseball and football in addition to basketball um in high school did you feel like playing those two sports made you a better basketball player like how did it contribute to your basketball game um uh, i feel like football for sure i'm not really not really sure about bas about baseball how that contributed to the basketball maybe as far as um uh, team bonding and camaraderie but uh in the football aspect for sure uh the physicality and, and not being scared to take a hit and uh just being an absolute dog on the court I feel like I get all that from playing football my whole life right right um and it you played cornerback and receiver yes cornerback and receiver yeah yeah do I mean I feel like uh playing basketball, it kind of helps you build skills for other sports. So like, you know, you see a lot of uh, football players that are like tight ends that used to play basketball. Um, so w I could imagine like playing receiver, you're running routes and stuff. Did that help with your footwork at all? Uh, I feel like it did a lot. I feel like it did a whole lot. Um, in college, my coaches always said I had a real good feet and things like that. And I, I feel like that, that came from just being on the football field, going through cone work, um, the ladder, and things like that so most definitely right yeah I mean and you're a point guard so footwork is obviously super important and probably give exactly. you a step over other players for sure um so in my research I saw that you had a, a little bit of, of beef with your high school coach um I don't know <laughs> yeah. if it's the beef or not but kind of attention um do you still talk to him at all or what's your relationship yeah we're actually we're actually we're actually pretty cool now we just had a a misunderstanding uh when I was there in high school and you know uh we're, we're good now we see eye to eye and you know I at first I really didn't agree with the things that that he wanted from me in high school and probably maturity played a, a big role in that as well but uh he's a good guy good heart and we see eye to eye now and, and nice. it's cool. yeah that's good to hear um so you were in high school. Um, you had a um, had colleges attracting you, but the SATs were a problem. Is that accurate? Uh, kinda. It's kinda accurate. Uh, I feel like my high school coach really didn't put me in the best situation to showcase my talent or to get me to the next level as he could have. And he was really pushing me to go to a Division three school, 
in the area. It was okay. like it was like two it was two division three schools that he really wanted me to go to. Um, so that's that's where we kind of butt heads at. And I remember uh, my my junior year, we had a meeting, and uh, going into my senior year that summer, and it was a meeting with him and my parents, and we were talking about colleges, and he was saying how I for sure can go D three, maybe D two, but uh, unlikely going to Division One. So I mean, just being at a kid going into your senior year and hearing that, it kind of like crushed me in a way. Right. It, it rubbed me the wrong way. So, mm-hmm. you know, but right. everything worked out for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you probably had much bigger goals, you know, than Division Three. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with playing Division Three. Like, I have I have no problem with Division Three schools because, I mean. Being able to play basketball at the next level is very important, and, and if you're doing that, then, then you're in great hands. But for me, I just always knew with my work ethic and and my skill set that I, I wanted to play at the highest level. Right. Yeah, and you knew you could do it. Um, so you you went to you transferred to Hargrave in Chatham, Virginia, which was a a prep yeah. school. Um, right. And it apparently it was pretty expensive. Uh, you had people help you out. Um, do you want to yeah. talk about about that and just that situation? Uh, yeah. So my my parents had to go into their four hundred one k. I think it was like around fifty eight thousand for me to go for for that semester uh, at Hargrave. So my parents had to do that. My grandparents helped, family, close family friends helped, and you know they they came together. They got it got it done, and it worked out for me because I got five years in college paid for. That's awesome, man. Um, you know, shout out to your family. Right, definitely. Big lesson. So you graduate high school, um, committed to Buffalo. The coach there uh, was fired. So you were oh, you opened up your um, recruiting again. Um, right. But Bobby Hurley wanted to talk to you. Um, what what was that meeting like when he first spoke to you? Uh, I remember he called me on the phone and – my dad and my granddad are, are real big Duke fans, so they knew who Hurley was. I, I really didn't have too much. Uh, they didn't know too much of his, his his history and his background, so I had to go go research that. But once he he flew to my house and had a meeting with me in, in my in my living room, and I just knew since that day I wanted to play for a guy like him. Right. Um. You know, he obviously left a big mark on you because you you transferred with him to to ASU. Uh. What was it so special about him that He's like unlike other coaches that you just had a connection so. Uh, he gave me the ultimate confidence. Where I have, I already have a lot of confidence, but he believed in me in a way that nobody else did before, and it just, I don't know, it was just like a weird connection that we that we both had, and it it, it had a it had to grow. It, it didn't start like this out out of the blue. Uh, we always butted heads and and things like that, but it all came from a good place because we're both big competitors and we wanted to win. Right. So after we, we both figured that out, uh, it it was it was smooth sailing. So you were at Buffalo for a couple of years. Um, what was that experience like for uh, personally and for your basketball career? Uh, Buffalo was amazing for me. It was my first two years in college. Uh, I was young. I really didn't know much, so I didn't know what to expect. And I just remember the city loving loving us for for what we did uh, when bringing the first championship in school history. Um, to Buffalo and going to the NCAA play tournament, something that they never done before. So it was just a, a great experience being there, and I'm forever grateful. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, they, that must have been a special moment for not only you guys but the whole city to see their team well, definitely make it to the NCAA tournament. Um, what was just the NCAA tournament experience like? Oh, it was amazing, man. Just just seeing all the people you, that you see on TV, uh, all the reporters. Everything is all high level. Uh, you get all the media attention. The game is packed. Uh, the energy is through the roof. It's, it's everything you want. It's, it's, I feel like every college player should have that experience one time at least. Right. I mean, just watching it on TV as a fan, like, it looks like, you know, the most fun thing um, of any sport, you know, just, yes, it's, just it's, the it's whole atmosphere. Yeah. Exactly. It's great. So you were named to the second team All-Mac. Um, and then you moved to ASU with uh, Bobby Hurley, as you mentioned before. What was the difference uh, in playing the, in the MAC and the Pac-12? Uh, the speed of the game, guys are more physical. 
uh, just a uh, you're playing like you, you. There's no night off. Like uh, some games, you might have a night off in, in a mid-major conference, but in, in the Pac-12, there's there's no night off. So right. anybody anybody can beat you. So you got to be on your game every night. And just like having uh, your like the teammates around you, were there any differences or similarities between that? Just the type uh, of players you're playing with. Yeah, uh, I play with a guy named Trey Holder. He he was a very good point guard out of LA. Me and him had very uh, similar similar I say skill set, and we both wanted to win and worked hard. So I'm just just playing with him, going to him in practice because my first year I had, I had to sit out and he started at the point guard position. So right. just battling him every day and trying to push him to be the best he could be, it also made me better. So that that was great. That was huge for me coming there my first year. I was uh, living it in Arizona, just being at ASU, and I'll get really hot over there. Man, it's amazing. It's the, I think it's the best school in the country. Uh, yes, it's hot in the summertime for two months, but the other 10 months of the year, I feel like you're living in paradise. The weather's amazing. Uh, there's pools everywhere. The school is huge. It's, it's, it's high, high level. So I was actually in Tempe last uh, last year for Dodger spring training, and we were, we were sitting nice. around campus, and it's a really nice campus. It just you, you're like beautiful all around the mountains and stuff. It's really nice. Yes, I loved it. It was the best three years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so just slide take over Buffalo. Yeah, uh, but I kind of compare it differently because Arizona State, I was a little bit older and I was kind of more of a, a leader. People kind of looked at me as a leader because I knew Hurley's system. And I knew what to expect. And right. at Buffalo, I was more like a, a – just trying to find the ways and figure out how I can fit in. So it, there's two different, two different comparisons. So you went to the NCAA tournament with Arizona as well. Um, but I saw you guys had a, a close loss to Syracuse. Um, what, do you remember that game? And like, what, what do you remember from that? Uh, yeah, I remember I missed the game winner. I had a, I had a shot to, to send it, to send us to the next round and I missed it. Um, uh, it kind of still hurts to this day thinking about it, but it's, it's a part of sports. Uh, you got to pick your head up and, and, and go to the next next game. But that being my last college game would always sit, sit different with me. But uh, just the atmosphere, like I said, just playing in that game with my guys, it was a back and forth game. Uh, I made some big shots, but I, I didn't make the one that counted the most. And like I said, that, that still hurts to me to this day. Yeah, um, you know, I'm not trying to pour salt in the wound or anything. Just <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> um, so after college, you had a summer league invite with the Houston Rockets. Um, besides actually playing like on the court in those games, uh, what were like the workouts like, and what were the practices like? Just being oh, it was great. Yeah, we, we we went to mini camp so the first week of July before we went to summer league. And it was just great, man. Just seeing Chris Paul, Harden, uh, PJ Tuck. You've seen all those guys that you see and you're working out with them, you're playing against them and you're going at them. And it, it was just a great experience. And I, I, being in that moment, that mini camp, that set the tone for everything else. Like I know that's where I want to be and that's where I got to get back to. So yeah. everything, I, everything I do from here on is to get back to that point. That's great. Um, yeah, so the goal is always to come back to the NBA. Exactly, yes. So what, uh, like working out with those guys, like what is it about those guys that people wouldn't expect that just sets them apart from everybody else? Work ethic. Uh, Harden is one of my good friends that's an NBA player that I've known from college. Uh, that we, I hung out with him in the summertime all the time. Uh, and it, it's his work ethic. That's what really separates him from, from a lot of guys. Uh, Yes, he, he's just like a normal person, but he works nonstop. And that's something that I learned from him and I try to try to do now every day is just work to get better. Find something you can get better at every day. It's awesome. Um, so what was it like playing those summer league games just against like probably people in the NBA right now? Right. Uh, so actually in summer league, the disappointing part, I, I didn't play one minute in that summer league. So I sat the bench the whole time and it was very disappointing and a very humbling experience. Uh, Right. I, yeah, so, I mean, but like I said, I'm a type of person where I try to take my bad 
my failures and, and turn them into a positive. So I just took that and tried to motivate me and work even harder. And I know those guys got to see me again one day and I'll be ready. Yeah, that's a great mentality to have. Um, I know you're a point guard too. So like, what were some things that you uh, learned watching Chris Paul and like try to add to your game? Because, you know, in my opinion, he's one of the best point guards to do it. Chris Paul is is a wizard, man, and a lot of he. I feel like he doesn't get his flowers, uh, but because yeah, he hasn't won a title. Way, <laughs> yeah, but he's a real point god. I, I like to say uh, the way he shares the ball, he can score. He's a, he's a he's a he's a a fighter. But the most important part, I feel like Chris Paul, he's a leader. He he doesn't stop talking on the court in practice or wherever he he's his voice is being heard. So. I just try to carry that with me when I'm overseas or when I'm working out with guys, just having that voice always talking. Mm-hmm. And I try to try to do that as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it's unfortunate that, you know, everyone focuses on ring so much, he doesn't really get the respect that he should. Right, exactly. Or, or there's some other NBA players that you've learned from and, and worked with? Uh, Devin Booker a little bit because he was in Phoenix and I was in ASU, so we – we hung out a few times as well. He, he's a cool guy, and but the the thing the thing about these guys is it's it's honestly their work ethic. Like there's it's nothing, you know. I know that they're they're high level guys, and and they're, they they do well in the NBA. But at the end of the day, like they're regular people. The only thing that separates them from other people is like the way they approach the game and their mindset to the game. So, uh, me being 25, kind of still young, kind of old. I feel like uh, I just want to my, – my approach to the game is just different now. Uh, taking care of your body, making sure that you're getting up in the morning, getting working, getting, getting working at night. Just constantly work and taking care of your body. I feel like mm-hmm. that's the, the main thing from some guys to those guys. Yeah, I mean, I could imagine just being around them and just, you know, seeing them as just normal people it motivates you and, like, tells you that you could do the same thing, right, if you just put the work Exactly, in. exactly. Not only me, but anybody else in the world. Uh, I just feel like work ethic separates every everything. So after uh, your summer league experience, you signed a contract with. Um, I'm not sure how to say the ne- the team name, so I'm not going to butcher it. But with the Hungarian yeah. league. Pox. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you lived in Hungary, uh, played basketball over there. What was that experience like compared to your other basketball experiences? It was definitely different being. Uh, nine hours time difference and and being in a, a small city in Hungary where you really don't don't know anything and uh, everything closes at nine o'clock there's only one high school no college everybody's older like there's nothing to do besides yeah. work out uh it was definitely it was, it was it was a tough experience for me it was very very tough uh but like I said, I just try to try to get through it, try to stay in the gym as much as possible, play video games, things like that, <laughs> to keep keep my mind off the time. But I met a lot of great people. Uh, I love the culture there, or the way they they go about things. They're very family oriented. Uh, so it, it was a good experience. I'll, I'll definitely go back to visit one day. Mm-hmm. I can imagine the language barrier must have been tough. Um, how long oh, did it take to, to acclimate to just the culture and, and like? Did it take like a year or two to, to be able to like get around by yourself? Uh, no, I actually, I was getting around by myself the first month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was just, I'm the type of person where like, I, I'll just go out, man. Just just go do some experience it and just right. take it for what it is. Yeah, I can't just sit it. Like I, I sat in the house for maybe a month before I went out. But after I went out, I, I just kept going because I wanted to see mm-hmm. uh, different different architectural uh budapest is, is is amazing man it has a lot of I, I was an hour from budapest so okay i make i make that drive on an off day and just go experience the, the different thermal baths the architects uh the different um they have these little uh these are like water parks where i don't know it's kind of it's kind of weird it's like a water park but it's, it's like old moderate I don't know. It's it's it's, it's, a, it's like it's like a weird type of feel to it, but it's very nice. That's cool. Um, I studied abroad in Italy for three months in college, so I went to nice. like one, one of these baths where it's just like, like a thermal bath. Yeah, yeah. You don't really see it over here, but like it's just you know a bunch of people like in the bathing suits, just in a giant bath, 
that's warm somehow. So it's, it's and, a, yeah, and then it's cold outside. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. Really interesting yeah, experience. <laughs> exactly yeah, but i had I some it. friends go to budapest because i think they're like known for their bats they have like exactly the best yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that's cool um how was the food out there uh the food was good i'm i'm not i'm a really picky eater so i don't really try two different like too much different types of food so i kind of stick with my same same diet food on, yeah so uh but the food the food to me was, it was good i liked it Right, I, is it a meat based? I don't know if. Uh, could well, be right uh, I was eat, I was eating a lot of chicken, fries, uh, spaghetti. Uh, they're really they're known for their soups, just like the soup and stuff. Uh, okay. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's cool. Uh, did you have any like players on on the team that were like in the same situation as you, like coming from America, um, in first time in Hungary? Uh yeah, actually Nick Falls, he played at Maryland and Long Beach State. He was it was just me and him. We were the only Americans my first year and uh he was I wanna say year three, two or three. He's like a few years older than me. So he kinda just helped me and showed me the way how it how it is being an overseas hooper and just getting adjusted to the life over there. Mm-hmm. And playing uh in that league, is it was it more physical game compared to over here? Very physical, yes. Uh, those the grown men, they're very strong. The refs really don't give you a lot of calls as well. So yeah, you gotta you gotta be able to to adjust to that for sure. Right, I can imagine when like you're attacking the paint and stuff, they're not gonna be forgiving with their hits and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah, there's a few little scuffles I got into because the people hit me a little hard, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, so. Congratulations! You just signed a contract with a French team, um, Elan Bernays. I don't know if yes. I said that correctly. Um, Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so you're gonna be heading to. I don't know when this uh, whole quarantine situation is gonna be over, but um, you, when are you gonna be heading to France? August eighth. August eighth. Yeah, I go and then I go right into quarantine when I get there as well. What's the situation um, in the league over there? When when are they gonna start playing? We're gonna start late September. So, uh, either I think I'm going to get tested for coronavirus uh, right before I go and show them my results when I get there or get tested when I get there and go into quarantine until I get my results, something like that. Then we're going to go into mini camp. Then the season will start late September, early October. Okay. Um, That's that's cool, man. Um, So, did they reach out to you or was this a team that was on your radar? Uh, Yeah, they reached out to my agent. And I felt like it was just uh, the best opportunity for me. Uh, I, I could have waited it out a little bit and, and tried to see if I can get something more or things like that. But I just wanted to get my foot in the door. And uh, the French League is a very popular league. Uh, the team I signed is a very historic club. And a lot of great guys come out there, with, come out of that club and, and go on to have great careers. So I, I just wanted to uh, get my foot in the door in the French League. And if I do what I do, what I did, if I do what I did in Hungary, I'll, I'll be I'll be all right. Um, yeah, I I believe I'm not you know an expert on European basketball, but I think that's the second best league behind the the Spanish league. Correct, correct. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. It's a great opportunity. What are you looking forward to um, with that team and just being in France? Uh, I just want to win. Uh, I'm still young in my career, and you know, uh, for me, it's all about winning. That's what I, that's what I love to do. Uh, that's why I play the game. So. I just want to win and, and play at a high level. So um, the NBA, you know, you've, you're starting off the playoffs. Um, were there any, any, like, players growing up that you, like, modeled your game after, like, that were really inspiring you? Uh, not really, because most guys are, are bigger than me. That I, that I, I like growing up, like, D. Wade. He was one of my favorite players. Uh, Allen Iverson. He's from my city, and he's he's kind of my size. So, I guess you can you you could probably say Allen Iverson. I try to quick crossover, get to that ramp, and shoot it as well. Uh, so I probably say Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson, yeah. I mean, he's uh, you know, model for all the all the small like skinny players. Um, definitely set exactly. the standard. Yeah. And real real tough, gritty gritty type of guy. So, definitely. Yeah. Would you? Is there a a player right now that you compare your game to, like that you play similar? Uh, 
I get a lot of comparisons to Ish Smith. Ish Smith, okay. Yeah, he played for the uh, the Wizards. So a lot of people say I kind of remind them of him. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, are you going to be watching the playoffs when they start back up? Definitely. I cannot wait till the NBA starts back up, man. Yeah. I can't wait. Do you have a team Get or you just enjoy the game? Nah, I just enjoy the game. I got a few of my friends that, that play, and I just want to see them do well. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'm a Laker fan, so I've been a Laker fan. Hope hope they can bring uh, me Nice, power. nice. You guys have a great chance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just worried yeah, about Giannis sure. and Kawhi, man. You know, they're definitely worried. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Even uh, – Celtics too can't sleep on them. Yeah, they got a good team, good good coach too, and you know it's gonna be in a bubble with all, all this going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think anything can happen. This is like gonna be a strange year. Anything, so. exactly. Yeah, for sure. So um, yeah, I appreciate uh, you coming on the pod, man. It was a great conversation. Definitely, definitely appreciate yeah. you having me. Of course. Um, yeah, we'll keep an eye on you. Um, how are you doing in the French league? I'm sure you're gonna do great. Appreciate that. I really do appreciate that, man. Uh, yep. Yeah. Shout out to Shannon Evans for being on the show. Um, remember, you could follow the pod on at DJ Sports on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach us for questions uh, at DJ Sports Pod at gmail.com. Shannon, thanks again, man. Take care. All right. Thank you. Enjoy yourself.